Okay. Well, this is a patient of mine who has an interesting story. He had a shoulder replacement done in 2008, and unfortunately, after his initial surgery, uh, about two years later, developed pretty significant limitations in function and really an acute loss of function. So he, he lost the ability to raise his arm. The surgeon that initially did his shoulder replacement um, was concerned that perhaps there was some issue with the rotator cuff and went back in and did another surgery on him, and unfortunately he didn't improve. He came and saw us, and um, after our evaluation, we realized that he had an infection in his shoulder, and we had to take his shoulder replacement out. Um, in place of that, we put a cement spacer with antibiotics, and we treated him with IV antibiotics for six weeks, and that spacer for several months. In November of 2010, about eight months, nine months after we initial saw, initially saw him, we had had a custom implant made by a company Biomet that um, we did a CT scan of his, of his shoulder and they did a three-dimensional reconstruction of that shoulder and were able to custom make a metal implant for him and we ended up putting a reverse shoulder in him uh, in November and he's done really well since then. Um, you want to raise your arm up for me? So he's got excellent function. He can lift his arm up about 150 degrees. It's 160 degrees of elevation. Reaches around his back, past his hip, and um, has really no pain. So we're really pleased with his function, and he's done really well. And it's um, it does show that patients that have complex problems can can end up with a great result. Yeah, turned out great. Couldn't be more pleased. That's good. Very good. Awesome. Good. Thank Thanks. So. Here's an actual photograph of the implant. You can see its unusual, irregular shape that was made to conform to the defect in the glenoid. This is Mr. Weddington's initial x-ray from his previous surgeon where he had a shoulder replacement done. You can see here that his humeral head is sitting up well above the greater tuberosity. And then over here, you do start to see indication of loosening of the glenoid where he's got some lines that have formed on either side of the glenoid on the top and the bottom, more significant on the top. Here is x-rays after he had a cement spacer put in. You can see the cement at the top of the, of the top of the shoulder here, and then there's a metal rod down the middle of the cement spacer that helps stabilize. You see the socket is an empty cavity there from where he'd had his previous shoulder replacement done. He then underwent a reverse shoulder replacement, and here are his x-rays afterwards. You can see the custom reverse base plate that was made to fill in the defects of the glenoid and the screws that also uh, go into the scapula. Here's the axillary view.